in this class character development. Like I said to you before, it is believed that you don't have a character. Amen? Amen. Because when you get born again, you are fresh. Whatever character you have, you culture it from the world. Isn't it? Okay. And the world has been a source of influence till you got born again. And so now that you are born again, you need a change. And that is something that we have not done a good job in communicating to believers. The Spirit does not give you a new character. But the Spirit gives you a new heart to take in the new character. Remember what God said in the book of Ezekiel? I believe Ezekiel chapter 32. Say hallelujah. Very often, we will not communicate the truth the way we should. If I fail to if you go back to Ezekiel 36, <clears throat> God speaking about the life of a new creation. In Ezekiel 36, verse 26, he says, I will give you a new heart. I will give you what? A new heart. Is there in your Bible? You can see it. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Wow. This is what God said we do. So actually, when we get born again, it is that new heart that we receive. Amen. When we say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, I give you my life. What are you giving? Is it your body? When you say, I give you my life, what are you giving? You are doing a transaction. And that is why the process of being born again, the process of being born again, we have not handled it properly in our time and in our generation. And that is why we have a lot of problems. If you look through the Acts of the Apostles, when they got born again, they were in the temple daily. They were where? In the temple daily. They were being taught, just like, just like the children have gone to school. The adults also will come to school. <laughs> It is always strange for us to understand how we think that when we just got born again, everything will become new. It's a process. The process of being born again is actually a transaction. And that transaction is simply that, Lord, I will accept your terms. I will accept your terms. And Lord, take away my old stubborn heart and give me a new heart. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of... You can see that the old heart cannot be taught. The old heart cannot be managed. If God said, I will take out the heart of stone, he tells you that our old nature was born in rebellion. Our old nature. When we talk about character development, character development for the new creation, listen to me. We are saying you don't have character when you come born again. 
When you got born again, you didn't have character. What the class does is to push the word of God to you, to build up your new character according to the word of God. When you join the military, they don't assume that you don't have to shoot. Do they? Otherwise, they won't put you all through the training. They put you through. When you join the police force, even though it's paramilitary, they don't assume that you understand the law or the constitution because the, the army defends the territorial integrity of a nation, right? Yes. The police, what does the police do? They defend the law. They patrol. Amen? So, when you join the police, they will teach you what the law says. That is how you will be able to know a criminal. Without the knowledge of the law, you cannot arrest anybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you join the Navy, they will train you on the water. Because that's where you do your fighting. If you join the Navy and they train you on land, battlefield, and they put you on water, you will run. Praise the Lord. If you join the Air Force, <laughs> and all you do is sit and walk around on ground. When the war breaks out, you will be on feet. Because every one of them have their area of functionality. It is only the army that fights on ground. True or false? It is only the navy that fights where? The sea. Right? High sea. The air force fights where? Where does the believer fight? You get it. The believer fight is spiritual. Paul said the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. So, to build up your character is to actually lay a foundation. In this one week, all we are doing is to lay a foundation for character. You know, we need to get you to a place where you'll be able to understand that you need this thing and you'll be hungry for it. If you look at the way you have been struggling as a Christian and all the ups and downs that has been happening to you, listen, to be born again is a transaction that involves the exchange of your old heart with a new heart. That's what born again is, an exchange. Is there in the word of God? I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh I give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27. <clears throat> I will put my spirit within you. That's the Holy Ghost we're talking about, isn't it? And cause you to walk in my status. And you will keep my judgment and do them. Praise the Lord. That is what it means to be born again. That is a transaction of salvation. It is beyond coming out on the altar and lifting up your hand. It is beyond it. And the reason why a lot of people get born again and don't experience change is because we end the transaction there on the altar by lifting up your hand and coming to Christ. No, 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 no. You go back to the early church. The Bible said daily they were in the temple. Daily they were in the temple. Daily they were in the temple. Praise the Lord. They were breaking bread from house to house. They had this fellowship. They were learning about this new doctrine. They were being taught about the will of the Spirit. They were, you know, they were being educated. The important thing you need to know is that when you got born again, you didn't have a character. When you buy a computer, you need to load it with the software, isn't it? It is the software that determines what the computer will do. And in the same way, when you are born again, the education that you get determines the type of Christian you will be. Truly. And if you don't get it, you don't become a good Christian. God said, I will put my word in you and you'll be able to walk in it. You don't have to struggle. It will be automatic for you to obey the word of the Lord. Why? Because the stony heart, the rebellious heart, when it is removed, you are given a heart of flesh. That heart of flesh is, 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 is moldable. You can, you, can, you can 
You can condition it. You can educate it. You can teach that heart. The heart of the old nature, you cannot train. You cannot educate. God said, I will remove what? The stony heart. I will remove what? The stony heart. And I will give you a heart of flesh. <clears throat> when you get that heart of flesh, you are fresh, you are brand new. You are fresh. What you receive is what will determine your life. But the problem is that when people get born again, they don't receive any training. And so they model themselves. They got born again quite all right. And because there is no program that is given to them about the new creation, so they carry over their old character. And what we do? We begin to walk on the old one. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. This is not good. This is not. And no matter, Jesus said you cannot put a new wine in the old wine skin. Did you read that? Why? It will bust it. And so what we do, and that is the biggest challenge we have in church today, we are putting new wine in the old wine skin, and it does not contain it. So we have rebellion, we have infighting, we have all manner of things that happens in the process. It doesn't work like that. We need to come to a point and say to people, when you get born again, all your character before condemn it. Some people love their car. And then also, even, even in Africa or even in Nigeria, people become so passionate with things. Amen? And so they just love the things, they love the things more than God. And anything you love more than God becomes your object of worship, which was what Paul was talking to them in Acts chapter 17. And that is the reason why you need to be careful even in relationships. You can get to a point in relationship where you value your wife or your husband or your children, you love them more passionately than God. What does that mean? They become excuse for your ineffective service in the house of God. That is it. Remember that children are a gift from God. And so when the gift becomes more valued than the giver, that's idol worship. That's idol worship. I do worship means whatsoever you value above your God. That's I do worship. Whatsoever that separates you from God, that's I do worship. Whatsoever that makes you ineffective with God, that's I do worship. Whatsoever that distracts you from serving God, that's I do worship. And we need to be careful. Amen. And I say to you, it is very easy for you to open the doors for the demons to come into your life. But it's not so easy to get rid of them. The way you used to behave, condemn it. The way you used to talk, condemn it. The way you used to walk, condemn it. And the person said, what happened to me now? I said, you are a new creation. Now, you start learning. You start what? Learning. You need to learn how to talk again. Oh yes. You need to learn how to talk again. You need to learn how the type of language you use. Have you ever had a song? Hallelujah is a heavenly language. It's a heaven. It doesn't stop with hallelujah. It starts from Genesis to Revelation. That's our new language. Praise the Lord. When you go into school and go primary one, they give you ABC. To start with. Praise the Lord. Many children, when they enter school, they don't know how to say ABC. They don't know how to form sentences. They don't know how to read or write, isn't it? And so, if you send a child to school and just said, 
please just improve my job and the things he already knows. How will it be like? And yet that's what we do. But the children will accept A, B, C from them. And then we get on again, we start by writing composition. And so we have the problem we are having. So we are having the problem we are having. And that is why we have so much struggle, struggle, so much struggle to make people change, to make people change. They were not supposed to change, they were supposed to be brand new. Are you getting me? If any man be in Christ. All things. No, no, no. All things. And all things. What are we talking about? Have you ever thought about it? What are we talking about? One of the great tragedy of our time is that we read scriptures without understanding it. If any man be in Christ, when you born again, that's the Bible said, Second Corinthians chapter 7, isn't it? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Let's open it up read. While we still keep our finger from 37, sorry, 36. Ezekiel 36. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. All things have passed away. All things have passed away. Behold. 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 All things have become new. What exactly became new? All things. All things. What is all things? Have you thought about it? What is all things that have become new? A new heart will I give unto you. Amen. Amen. A new heart. When you buy a brand new engine and put it in your old car, and somebody says, This car can you travel because of the way the body does it, don't let the body deceive you. It is a new, a new, because what makes a new car? The engine. engine, not the body. It is the engine that does the work. Amen. In the same way, what does the work in the man? The heart. It's your heart. That's, your heart is you. Jesus said, <clears throat> it is not what goes into the man that defines the mind. It is what comes out of the man that defines the man. As long as the old heart is in you, Will be defined when you speak. So, the born again transaction is about a new heart replacing the old heart. It is about the old nature being replaced with the new nature. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, he says, all things have become new. You don't talk the way you used to talk, you don't act the way you used to act. Even though some of the conduct, some of your conduct may be okay, you know, like we say, I don't smoke, I don't urbanize, I don't steal, at least my case is not as bad as that. You can talk about the physical sin and you judge yourself to be okay. But we have, we have come to know that the spiritual sins are more terrible than the physical sin. Pride, you can see pride. It's a spiritual sin. Amen. Envy, jealousy, they are all spiritual sin, and they are worse. And so you can say, I don't do what this is, I don't do that, I don't do that, I don't do that, I don't do that. And you justify yourself, for your heart is as black as charcoal. And God does not look at the physical sin. Of course, it's, it's, he also judges physical sin. But God looks at the spiritual sin much more than the physical sin. You know why? It is easier to repent the physical sin than spiritual sin. You can argue up a spiritual sin. Somebody say you are proud, you say I'm not proud. I'm just principled. So, whose word do you believe? You tell the person you are proud, the person says I'm not proud, I'm principled. I'm sure you need to change that, I don't need to change anything. So, the person disagrees with you. But if you catch somebody with adultery, 
So you committed adultery, said I am. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. It's the difference. And yet, what we do, we lay more emphasis on the physical sin because that's what we see. Because, you know, I told you yesterday that the devil is the manufacturer of evidence. God creates, the devil manufactures from God's creation. Because a manufacturer needs raw material. A creator can create from nothing. Ex nihilo, creation from nothing. Only God can do that. Praise the Lord. Only God can do that. So, when we come to Christ, we are brand new. A new heart. A new heart. Our body, our physical appearance remains the same, isn't it? But, but that is when the work begins. I told you before that an evangelist can go and have a crusade and get 2,000 people born again. And then he will go about and say the crusade was a big success. Big success. You need to see people that give the life to Jesus. And then he said 2,000. You say, wow, praise God, it was a big crusade. And then he said, all of you that come to this crusade and go born again, uh, distribute them to the churches around. And then they share them to churches. They go born again. They go born again and share them into churches. And then Sunday morning, the pastor of a local church comes and see people chewing gum with that. And some people with tattoo. I said, we call the ocean. Where did all those people come from? These are strange looking fellows. And then somebody said, oh, they came from the crusade. They got born again last night. They got born again. How did they find him? He said, the pastor told them to locate the nearest church to them. Wow. The evangelist is celebrating the success of, of, of the crusade. The pastor is having trouble this Sunday morning. Sit down, say, I will not sit down, I don't like that chair. Mm. Amen. Mm. Sit down. No, 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 no. And then the women wear hot mini skirt. <laughs> and they get to the front and start and start. <laughs> pastor, see me. <laughs> and Usher goes and gives them a handkerchief, please go by your leg and say, Why? Ha! This church said, You could do righteous. The, the evangelists are talking the born again, truly, truly. But here they have come raw, very raw. And the work of training them now is much more difficult than getting them born again. We celebrate born again, we don't celebrate development. That's important. And so we celebrate the numbers, the statistics. But actually, what we should celebrate is the transformation. This person couldn't break before now, the person can break. Hallelujah. This person now is evangelized. This person is living in a department. This person now has been transformed. And there are people that are in church for five years, ten years, they never developed. So character development, we are starting you from zero, zero, zero. And the foundation that you are getting this week tells you that you truly need to develop a Christian character. And that's why it's called Character Development Institute or Character Development Class. We you just come with a lousy character? Let me pray like that. And that is why we've been having so much problem. Back in Deuteronomy 32, Moses said to them, as Moses was heading his ministry, Moses said to them, he says, he says, he actually said, the word of God is not futile. Amen? Amen. He says, the word of God for you is not futile. He said, but what? It is your life. They were on a journey to the promised land. Now, that was in the Old Testament. When we get born again, we are transferred automatically, spiritually, into the Promised land. We come into Zion the moment we get born again. That's what uh, Colossians chapter 1 tells us. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We are transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. So when we get born again, the transfer takes place. It's all spiritual because we are spiritual people. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the moment you come 
go to Christ. To begin to let you know, your life is in the world. Your life is in what? In the world. And the world is your life. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Deuteronomy 32. 